What is up Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some r slash am I yeah, the butthole. <laughs> if you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too, as it all massively helps out our channel. I can never, ever express that enough. So thank you so much for being awesome and let's crack on with today's stories. Much love guys. Now this first story is from Need to Know Am I the Arsehole? And it's called Am I the Arsehole for Refusing to Lie to My Niece About Getting Married? My girlfriend and I, 28 and 29, have been together nine years. Just found out we're going to have a baby. We are very excited, have been trying for almost six months, so this is huge for us. My sister and niece came over to our house a few days back. They already knew since we told everyone else already. My niece is nine and started asking questions about when the wedding's going to be. We were both confused because our families know we don't have plans on ever getting married, so there sure as hell isn't going to be a wedding. Apparently, my sister told her there was going to be one after finding out we're having a baby. But I said we're not getting married, and that seemed to confuse my niece for some reason. She asked my sister, aren't people supposed to be married so they can have a baby? My sister told her it's true, so we do plan on it in the future. This felt too ridiculous for me, so we didn't play along with whatever it was my sister was trying to force. We assured my niece we had no plans to get married and we're still going to have our baby regardless. We left it at that and changed the subject to something else. My sister was beyond mad when we talked again. She knows we don't believe in getting married, but we still could have gone along with it since she doesn't want her daughter thinking it's okay to have kids out of wedlock. I think it's ridiculous, but her kid, her rules I guess. She thinks because we know her beliefs on marriage and all that stuff, the least we could do is respect her enough to go along with it even if we don't plan on actually getting married. Now, I don't know if maybe we were the arseholes. It was pretty obvious that she was trying to push during the conversation, but we just wouldn't lie about it. She seemed to believe we were for not being willing to do this for her. So let me get this straight. Your sister wants you to respect her beliefs, but yet she won't respect yours. So how does that bloody work? The cheeky so-and-so. No, 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 you're absolutely not the asshole in this situation. And what's she gonna do? Try to hide this from her forever? I mean, niece is gonna find out soon enough. <laughs> the realities of relationships and things like that. You're absolutely not the asshole. Your sister is being absolutely ridiculous in this situation. But Fizz Bang Wiz says not the asshole. Nine is plenty old enough to grasp the concepts of different types of relationships. I'm sure the kid has friends at school whose parents aren't married or are divorced or whatever else. Your sister set you up for this by telling the first lie to her kid and not even bothering to tell you that she'd done it. She clearly doesn't respect your relationship because she doesn't even think it's important enough to inform you about the lie she told. And use potato 9494 says not the arsehole. Besides the fact that she lied and disrespected your relationship, the child is nine. I'm sure she is fully aware that not every family is happily married and popping out kids. <laughs> All your sister did is confuse her child about something she probably wouldn't have been asking about if your sister didn't make up the lie in the first place. Don't lie to her. You have a wonderful family and don't need a piece of paper to prove it. You owe your sister nothing. Your niece has to live in this world and she should be aware families all look different. And jcrom8001 says, Not the arsehole. She is making a judgment on your relationship indirectly by telling her daughter untrue things with regard to your relationship. Her daughter will find out at some point in the future that her mum was lying to her. She should have been mature enough to explain your relationship with your partner. And we'll have one more from KFN saying, not the arsehole. You shouldn't have to lie about planning to get married just because your judgmental sister doesn't believe in kids out of wedlock. Such a ridiculous concept, to be honest. And now we move on to the next story. Now, this next story is from Own Reputation 2618. Am I the arsehole? 26 male for not one of my little cousin, 17 male, to come spend two weeks at my house for this summer for vacation. Let me explain. So my little cousin lives about an hour away from me. Since he was a toddler, he would always spend time at my house for weeks on end during the holidays and summer. I'm gonna be honest here, my cousin has a reputation of terrible behavior. For example, he ran up to my father and headbutted him in the hip two weeks after hip surgery when he was four. As he got older, his behavior hasn't changed. My auntie, his mum, constantly calls me and complains about how rude, obnoxious, and inconsiderate he is all the time. I'll give a few main examples. 
One, he shits and doesn't flush the toilet, regularly. He does it at my house and it's disgusting. His response every time is, my bad, I forgot. Two, he is extremely greedy. He will eat a pound of wings to himself that is meant to be shared without any thought that people around him are supposed to have some. Again, he's done this at my house multiple times and it's pretty frustrating after coming home from a long day of work. Three, he is extremely loud when he plays video games. Loud to the point where the tenants who lived in his mum's basement were forced to move out because they couldn't sleep at night. His response was that he didn't care. He also does this at my house. Four, most of the time he will only talk to you if it involves getting him something, food, a gift, a favor. Other than that, he will be in his room. Five, he is extremely messy. He ate a plate of chicken at my house and literally left bones on the table. I walked in on him, picking his nose and rubbing it on my bed. At 16 years old, not six. Also, read my first point again. Six, he destroys my wallet. He has his own money, but whenever he comes over, he views it as an all-inclusive or some shit. Always wants to eat out, always needs a new hoodie, always needs to get some expensive objective finished. Last year, I took him to get his driver's license. He failed the test. If my cousin was well-behaved, I would love to have him over all the time. Sadly, it isn't like that though. It's to the point where I dread the idea of him coming here, and to be honest, it makes me pretty sad. Now here's where it gets tricky for me. Recently, his behavior has been even worse, to the point where his mum asked him to go live with his father for a few weeks. They divorced three years ago. So now, that time is approaching for him to go back home with his mum. She calls me asking, oh, can you please come pick him up so that he can stay at your place for two weeks? I feel bad for him. Bruh, feel bad for what? She knows that he doesn't behave here as well. He never has. So the question I have here is, am I the arsehole for not wanting to take this ill-mannered, terribly behaved young man at my house for two weeks? Edit, here's some extra info that's probably important. Yes, I live at home with my parents, paying mortgage, paying bills, doing groceries, maintaining the house, driving both of my elderly parents to and from appointments because I'm the only one at home who drives. My parents are at the age where they have given responsibility of the home to me. No, if I was in this situation, I wouldn't be accepting someone like that into my house or parents' house. I don't know if you're going to have the full choice on it, if it is your parents' house. I don't know if you're going to be able to make that choice in the very end. I just don't know. But assuming you are, I wouldn't take him in. Because who wants someone who's, who's that bloody rude in your house? And I think that's the only way this guy is going to learn. If he starts pushing people away and they don't want him around no more because it doesn't sound like he had listened to anyone in any other way. And you know, just no. <laughs> but Dazzling Chicken says, not the arsehole. Tell her he's not wanted at your house for the same reasons she doesn't want him at home with her. That should work. And Difficult Claim says, not the arsehole. He sounds like a threat to humanity. And Dark Child says, not the arsehole. But to be honest, I really do not understand why you and many others in situations like this just can't use their words. Tell his mother, I'm sorry, I'm not willing to have him at my place anymore. Besides the ill manners and attitude, I keep forking out money due to destruction of property. He has no respect for me or my property and treats it like an all expense paid holiday. People need to be told so they can sink or swim. If there are no consequences to someone's actions, they will not change. Obviously, your family knows what kind of person he is and should have educated it out of him by his parents throughout the years. Just let them know unless you see genuine changes in your cousin, he won't be staying over again. Nobody has to put up with that kind of behavior from anyone. Life is too short. People need to stop just accepting things you don't want in your life, especially from family. And KRLRK says, not the arsehole. Why would you even consider it? You obviously do not want it. He can stay at home with his parents. He is their responsibility, not yours. And Pocket or Penny says, just say no. Can't do house guests, sorry. And with that being said, we'll move on to the next story. And our next story comes from Digital Stomp. Am I the arsehole for asking my SO to take the baby with her when she leaves the room in the middle of the night? I have to wake up at 5 to 6 a.m. every weekday for work. My SO is a stay-at-home mum. Approximately once a night, she gets up around, around 2 or 3 a.m. She hasn't actually went to sleep yet. She's just watching TV and getting ready to go to sleep, to go to the restroom or put clothes in the dryer, etc. Our five-month-old baby immediately wakes up and starts screaming as soon as my SO leaves the room. Most nights I spend around 10 to 20 minutes woken up in the middle of the night trying to get our baby to stop crying, but she never does until my SO comes back. I can't fall asleep easily and takes me 30 minutes to an hour to fall back to sleep. I've asked her to take the baby with her and put her in the baby swing or something so that I don't wake up. My SO says that she shouldn't have to do that and I should wake up. 
If the roles were reversed, I would do that for her, but she says that isn't the point and you shouldn't mind having to wake up and she should be able to do something without having to bring the baby with her. I told her that I think it's selfish to make me wake up just because I shouldn't mind waking up. When I am not at work, I help take care of all of our children and would give her breaks from the baby. It's not that I'm lazy or don't want to be with my baby, but having to spend every workday tired just because I have to, in my opinion, wake up for no reason just doesn't seem fair to me. Am I the arsehole? Edits, my other children are seven and five. Many have asked why she's doing laundry in the middle of the night. A lot of times she starts a load of laundry and forgets to or delays putting it into the dryer. Then when she wakes up in the middle of the night, she decides to go and do it then. Yes, I do help with laundry, cleaning and dishes. Why don't you sleep in a different room? My SO doesn't like it when I sleep in a different room and gets angry. Why don't you wear earplugs? Great idea. I'm going to try that. Also, my SO is more nocturnal than me and doesn't sleep until 3 to 4 a.m. because she wakes up later in the day than I do. I do wake up with the baby and try to soothe her until my wife comes back. I don't refuse and just go back to sleep. I occasionally ask my wife why she won't take the baby to another room though. Edit, edit. I'm going to discuss getting on similar sleep schedules with my wife and do more around the house. And we'll start off with mum to two cats saying, you're the arsehole, you have several children. So she's not catching up on our sleep in the middle of the day either. And she apparently is also overworked. She's doing laundry in the middle of the night. But you also think she has to give up the ability to ever use the bathroom without a child at her side. Because I'd bet she's got kids following her during the day and that baby to watch too. So that you never have to have your sleep disturbed. Seriously, what makes your sleep more valuable than hers? Why are you not doing enough to help so that she doesn't have to do laundry at 3am? Why are you so bad at soothing your own kid back to sleep? If you're both working all day, her at childcare, at housework and you at work and splitting the evening shift as it were, why do you think she is the only one that should do the night shift? Get it together. And Ageless09 says, you're the arsehole. Why is your sleep so precious and hers isn't? You have a job outside the home, but guess what? She has a full-time 24 hours a day job with a baby. If the baby wakes up, get up and help. She probably spends all day soothing that baby while you get to escape to work. And we'll have one more from Tough Dog 18's quoting, I have to wake up at five to six a.m. every weekday for work. My SO is a stay-at-home mum. Approximately once a night, she gets up around two or three a.m. to go to the restroom or put clothes in the dryer, etc. Our five-month-old baby immediately wakes up and starts screaming as soon as my SO leaves the room and then says this whole thing is so confusing and the only thing i could glean is that you are the arsehole but why is your wife waking up at 3 a.m to put clothes in the dryer why is your baby waking up from your wife does your baby not just wake up to eat why is it mysteriously impossible for you to soothe your own baby if you have other children you know that this isn't forever anyway and all you need to do is keep on going and the baby will soothe with you why aren't you doing that your wife being a stay-at-home mum is not relevant. You just revealed you have several children. So you have to get up at five or six and she's up in the middle of the night. When do you think she makes up her own lack of sleep? You think being a stay-at-home mum means she lounges around all day eating bonbons. I don't get any of this. It seems off. I wonder if you're even real. If you are, why did you have children if you want to get a full night's sleep when they are babies? And now we move on to the next story. And this next story comes from Anti Anime Mum. Am I the arsehole for getting takeout for myself and not bringing any back for my family? I work at a nursing home, very long hours. I often do double shifts and don't really get much to eat at lunch. Maybe I sneak in a couple of bites. There's usually some kind of emergency that interrupts me. My boyfriend has tried to be understanding. He usually tries and have me something to eat when I get home. He usually makes breakfast for me and the kids. He's new to this role though. He's not really the best cook. Honestly, he burns things or doesn't read the instructions right so the food comes out wrong. I just wanted something good, not something I have to force down. Oh dear. I got off the night shift and didn't eat lunch because of an emergency. And on the way home, I got a sudden cravings for pancakes. All I could think about was pancakes. So I got me a pancake breakfast from McDee's. I figured he made the kids breakfast already, so I just got one for me. When I got home, they're all eating. They all stare at me when I got out my breakfast platter. Despite having just ate, they're all hounding me for a bite of pancake, a hash brown. I just ignored them and ate my food. They complained to dad. He comes over and says something rude about me, forgetting about them. They didn't have enough for everyone. I ignored him and just ate. He mentioned how he had food for me already. I told him about my pancake craving and I'd rather have them. They're all staring at me. 
He said, why not just eat at the place? You know they like pancakes. I told him I was hungry and tired and just want to go to bed as soon as I eat and food makes me tired. He just stormed off. My kids followed him and I heard them crying and begging him to get me to give them some of the food I got. The kids started staring at me again. It was getting on my nerves so I just said, damn, you guys are like a bunch of vultures. Can't you just go bother someone else? And my boyfriend yelled at me for being inconsiderate. Was I wrong? It's one of these ones where the attitude is bothering me instantly. And I know I shouldn't go just on the attitude, but it just, the way she talks about the boyfriend, you know, the boyfriend tries cooking for her and has her meals prepared and all that sort of stuff. And you'd think she'd be grateful for that, but no, she just, it's just bloody rude about his cooking. So he burns things or he doesn't read instructions and, and his food just comes out wrong. And I just wanted something good, not something that I have to force down. It's like, well, if you don't like his food, bloody do it yourself. And I don't think OP is wrong for, you know, wanting to get some, themselves something else to eat. But sit in the restaurant and eat it. Coming back and sit in front of the kids with pancakes and hash browns and stuff like that is, yeah, I, th I think it's just unfair in my opinion. You had kids. You know what kids are like. They're going to want some of that McDonald's goodness. Although not everyone likes McDonald's, to be fair. <laughs> but I do like their breakfast. Double sausage and egg muffin. <laughs> But mainly it's just the attitude that's getting me getting me to me mainly in this one. And I think if you don't like his cooking that much, you should talk about it and maybe help him out and and in some non-patronizing way. Teach him some recipes so he can become a better cook. Oh man. <laughs> not sure if I'm gonna be wrong on my judgment on this one or not. I really don't. But Jeepers Creeper74 says, You're the asshole. Getting a meal on your own is fine, but everyone with kids knows it's your parental duty to shove those pancakes in your face while hunched over your steering wheel in the McDonald's parking lot, looking from side to side occasionally to make sure nobody's watching. Ideally, you'll keep a change of clothes in the trunk so that nobody will smell the imitation maple syrup and hash brown cakes as you walk in the door. Kids are like bloodhounds when it comes to Urdu McDonald's. <laughs> ETA, in the 30 minutes since I posted my comment, I've thought of nothing but McDonald's pancakes. So double, you're the arsehole. And Conscious Card says, you're the arsehole. You don't bring home McDonald's just for yourself, an idiot in front of your kids. That's just cruel. And Darcy33 says, you're the arsehole. It would never in a million years occur to me to get a meal and not send a, a quick text or make a quick phone call to ask if anyone at the house wanted anything. You had to have known that regardless of how already eaten, the kids still would have wanted McDonald's when they saw you bring it in. And one more from Oh High Internet says, yes, you're the arsehole. It sounds like you handled that very poorly. You could have eaten at McDonald's. You could have called on your way through the drive through and asked if they wanted anything while you were there because you were craving pancakes this morning. There are many ways you could not have been the arsehole, but from the way you describe it, it looks like you are. Don't tell me you didn't realize that your presumably wrong children were going to want and hound you for pancakes if you brought them into the house. Don't tell me that you didn't realize that the partner you knew had cooked for you would feel rejected and taken back when you literally bring home other food to eat in front of them while ignoring them and your children and being rude and dismissive when questioned. You might have been tired after a long shift, but your partner and kids don't deserve to have that taken out on them when you got home. Now, what do you think of today's selection of stories? What are your verdicts on today's stories if you choose to share them? Don't feel pressure to do so though, only if you want to. And thank you so much for being here today. If you do have a moment of your time, please consider clicking that like button if you did enjoy today's stories. Thank you so much for your love, support and time. And if you want to support the channel further, you absolutely can by clicking that join button down below for YouTube or clicking the link in the description for Patreon and joining up there. Never any pressure to do so though, just if you want to. And thank you once again for your love, support and time. And I will see you, you spicy so-and-so, <laughs> in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.